Hello, statisticians. Mr. Young Savior here from Skew the Script. Today we'll be looking at the concept of successive events and probability by exploring one of the greatest NBA performances of all time, Kobe Bryant's 81 point game. Let's skew it. Today's lesson is on the probability of successive events. This is lesson 5.4 in our course sequence. And today we'll be discussing one of the most impressive NBA performances of all time, Kobe Bryant's 81 point game. He is second on the leaderboard of most points scored in a game, only trailing Wilt Chamberlain's 100 point game in 1962. Kobe Bryant scored 81 points in 2006 in a tremendous game against the Toronto Raptors. 81 points in a game, that is Kobe Bryant's most points scored in a game in his career by far. And that begs the question, did Kobe Bryant have a hot hand that day? In other words, was he particularly on that day? Was he a, a different basketball player that day where his probability of sinking shots was much higher than normal? Or was this somewhat of a chance process? Did Kobe Bryant use his skills and ability, but also maybe got lucky that day and happened to be sinking more shots by chance and have a really good game? Well, that's going to be our key analysis today. 81 points. Was that performance a combo of skill and good luck that day? Or was Kobe a truly better player that day having a hot hand? So if you want to follow along using notes, please go to our website link right here to print those up and follow along. In order to build up to discussing Kobe's game, let's talk about some probability notions first. First, let's talk about the probability of successive independent events. So when we talk about successive independent events, let's break that down. Successive means that events are happening one after the other. It's a repeated process. Independent means that if you know the outcome of one event, that doesn't change the probability of another event occurring. So let's look at one example. An example of successive independent events is flipping a coin many times. For example, what is the probability of getting heads five times in a row if you flipped a coin that was a fair coin, 50%, 50%? Well, the first flip, there's a 50% chance of heads, a 50% chance of tails. And then on the second flip, after getting a heads on the first one, we would have to get a heads again. The second flip, again, the probability is still the same. No matter what happens that first flip, the second flip is still gonna be 50% heads, 50% tails. That's what makes the events independent. And we can continue on the heads route. So third flip, heads or tails, fourth flip, heads or tails, fifth flip, heads or tails. We make a tree diagram like this. And we're specifically looking at the path of Heads, 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 and heads. Five heads in a row, each with a 50% probability. So we can break that down. The probability of getting five heads in a row is the probability of getting a heads the first time and a heads the second time and a heads the third time, et cetera. And means both, we need all these heads to happen in succession. Um, so remember, and means multiply. And because these are independent, we can just multiply their probabilities. So we can do 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, times 0 0.5, times 0 0.5 which is 0 0.5 to the fifth power, which gets you 0.03. There's a 3% chance of getting five heads in a row. Since the probabilities don't change with independent events, remember, the first flip didn't have any bearing on the second flip because the probability is still going to be heads or tails 50%, 50%. You don't really need a tree diagram. Because these events are independent, we don't really need to chart it out. Here's another example where I can show you that. A free throw is a penalty shot in basketball. If you're fouled, you get to go to the free throw line and shoot baskets without having anyone guard you. One of the NBA's best free throw shooters is Stephen Curry. He makes 90.6% of the free throws he attempts, which is a really high uh, free throw rate. Assume each free throw attempt is independent. What is the probability he makes six free throws in a row? And it makes sense to treat free throws as independent because as you can see from this picture here, when you shoot a free throw, you're at a set line that's always the same distance from the basket and no one's guarding you. So you can treat them as, well, this is equal probability every time of going in. So the probability of making six in a row is the probability he makes his first attempt and the second attempt and the third attempt, et cetera. So we know that's the probability of making one attempt multiplied by itself six times. Or in this case, 0.906 is 90.6% probability to the sixth power. That is a 55.3% chance of making six of these free throws in a row. So the probability of Stephen Curry making six in a row is 55.3%. That's huge considering he has to do a streak that long. And to put that into some context, you can look at a notoriously poor free throw shooter, Shaq. 
And his probability of making just one free throw in a row, his probability of making just one free throw was lower, 52.7. So there's a higher chance of Stephen Curry making six in a row compared to Shaq just making one. Now, let's look at another example. Say that Stephen Curry is fouled. Um, well, Stephen Curry is a player that shoots a lot of three-pointers, and he might be fouled when he's shooting a three, so he gets to take three free throws. Um, so when he takes three free throws, what is the probability he makes the first two but misses the last one? So that's probably of making two and then missing one. So that means he makes the first and makes the second and misses the third. So again, we don't really need a tree here because the probabilities are going to remain the same. Um, there's, we need a set probability for making and a set probability for missing. Probably he makes them as 90.6%, so the probability he misses is 9.4%, because those have to add to 100 since they're complements. So that's 0 0.906 times 0 0.906 times 0 0.094, it's probably missing, and that probability is 7.7%, .7%, roughly. Now, let's talk about a situation called the at least one situations. So Stephen Curry, who we know makes 90.6% 90 of his free throw attempts, um, what is the probability he makes at least one of his next four free throws? Well, making at least one means that you make one of those four or more. So if you make one, two, three, or four, he just can't miss any, um, all of them. So that probability is several events together. It could be that he makes all four, which is 0.906 to the fourth power, because it's make, 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 and make. Or remember, or means add, he could have made the first three and then missed the last one. Because again, at least one, well, three counts in that event. Or he could have made the first two, missed one, and then made the last one. Or he could have, there's a lot of situations here, as you can see. And they range from making all four to making three to making two, and there's a lot to add up, and it can get really hairy very quickly. So instead, let's think about it like this. Probably making at least one, well, that's just the opposite, the complement of making none. Because the only way that you can't make at least one free throw is if you all four times don't make any free throws. So we know that means that the probability of making at least one is one minus the probability of making none, since those events are complements by the complement rule. So we can just do that one probability and do one minus that. The probability of making at least one is one minus the probability of miss and miss and miss and miss, which in other words is 0 0.094 to the fourth power for Stephen Curry, who misses 9.4% of his free throws. And once you do that, you get a probability of 0 0.9992. There's almost 100% chance that Stephen Curry will make at least one or more out of his four free throws. So when asked to find the probability of an at least one event, you should take the complement of the event that none of that event occur. Um, so the probably at least one is one minus probability of no successes. So let's talk about one more situation. This is more of a dependent situation, sampling without replacement. So very simple example, just to get your mind around this. You have a jar with 12 marbles and eight, 12 blue marbles and eight red marbles. Imagine you sample marbles without replacing it. So each time you take a marble out, you don't put it back in the jar. What is the probability of drawing the following? A blue marble, then a red one, then a blue. Well, the first one has to be blue. And that probability is 12 blue marbles out of the total of 20 in the jar. And the next one has to be red. So we're gonna multiply it by the probability of getting a red one next. So there were eight red marbles in the jar. So that's eight out of, well, you have to be careful here. Because remember, we took that first blue marble out of the jar. We didn't replace it. So now the new denominator, the new number of marbles in the jar that's left in there is 19. That's the total number of possibilities there. Then once we draw the red marble and we need to get a blue one, the last one, there are 18 marbles now left in the jar because we've drawn out a blue and a red and thrown them out. Now we just have the 11 blue ones left because remember we took the blue one out before so we have 11 out of 18 for getting the blue on that last draw so multiply all those together because it's an and event they all need to happen for this total event to happen 0.154 so now let's get to the special part of today's lesson testing kobe's hot hand the 81 point game in basketball, there's a common theory called the hot hand theory. That states that when a player starts to make many shots in a row, they have a hot hand. Their probability of making shots is higher than normal. They're heating up, they're really on that game. This, in probability terms, means that your shots are not independent. 
In other words, your current shot probability depends on your previous shots. If you've been doing well on your previous shots, that means that your current shot probability is higher than normal. If you've been doing poorly on your previous shots, that means your current shot probability might be a little bit lower than normal. So these are dependent. So Kobe's 81 point game. If Kobe had a hot hand, it was during his 81 point game, one of his best performances of all time. So let's see if we can determine if he had a hot hand that game statistically and probabilistically. So let's talk about the third quarter of that game. That, this was one of the strongest third quarters by any NBA player ever, and Kobe did it on that fateful day in 2006. The Lakers were down 49 to 63. Kobe gets on the floor. After the half, he had 26 points. So he enters the third quarter with 26 points. He quickly misses a three-pointer in the third quarter, then misses a jump shot. But then he has this hot streak that still baffles me to this day. He made a layup, so now he's at 28 points. He makes a jump shot, now he's at 30 points. He makes another jump shot. He makes a three-pointer. He makes another three-pointer from almost the exact same spot. He makes another three-pointer. He makes a jump shot from the corner, which he gets fouled on for an and one, so he makes a free throw after that. Then he makes another three-pointer, and there's still five minutes about left in the quarter. So he has this crazy streak and gets a ton of points in a very short amount of time. Then his streak ends. Unfortunately, he misses one. He is human. But then he makes a layup. He dunks. He has all these points in the paint. And then he has a final miss to end the quarter. And he ends the quarter with a total of 53 points for the game. He ends up with 81 by the end of the fourth quarter. As I mentioned, at the beginning of that quarter, the Lakers were trailing 49 to 63. At the end of that quarter, after Kobe's performance, they were up 91 to 85. And to talk about Kobe's dominance on this team, Kobe scored 81 points that game. The rest of the 2006 Lakers, they only scored 41. So Kobe was definitely the star on that team, and he really took the game over. So let's discuss this. Over his career, Kobe was a 44.7% accuracy shooter. So that means not on free throws, but on shots from the floor, he made about 45% of the shots he took. In the third quarter of that game, he made eight consecutive shots that weren't free throws, shots from the floor, they're called field goals. That game was his probably of making shots higher than usual. In other words, did he have a hot hand that game? Let's test that out. So first, let's test this out by assuming the hot hand doesn't exist. Let's pretend that each shot has an equal probability going in, no matter a player's previous results of the game, and each shot is independent. What is the probability of Kobe making this insane eight shots in a row? Well, the probability of making eight shots in a row we know from before, these are successive independent events, is the probability times itself, times itself, times itself eight times, because it's make and make and make and make eight times. So that's, in this case, 0.447, his uh, shooting percentage, to the eighth power which is only 0.0159, 0.159% chance of having eight shots make in a row. So you think he must have had a hot hand. This is such a low probability. It couldn't have happened by chance alone. These could not be independent. He was more on that day. He was a different player that day. But you got to keep in mind that Kobe took a lot of shots. In his career, Kobe took 30,697 shots. He actually took two more than that, but the NBA lost data on two of his shots. I don't know what happened there, but we have this data on all these shots. So we can look at the data set and look at how many eight shot streak would we expect Kobe to have if he was shooting independently. Well, to determine that, let's look at the amount of times he could have had an eight shot streak. So pretend in a very simple example that Kobe only took eight shots in his whole career. The number of times he could have had an eight shot streak was once. He would have to make all of them in his career to have an eight shot streak. Now pretend he only took nine shots in his career. There, in this case, is one chance that he makes eight shots in a row, which is the first eight, or there's another chance. Maybe he misses the first one, but then makes the next eight. That means that there are two ways to get an eight-shot streak if he only took nine shots in his career. Um, and if he made all nine, that means he made both streaks, so he gets both. Let's talk about if he had 10 shots. If he had 10 shots, well, he could have made the first eight, or he missed the first one, made the middle eight, or he made the, the last eight. So again, there are three ways to get this eight streak here. So the pattern is, the number of possible eight streaks in your career is equal to the total number of shots that you had minus seven. As we can see from this table here, if you had eight shots, that means minus seven, you only had one possibility of eight shot streak, nine minus seven, you only had two chances of eight shot streak, et cetera. So note that this means that longer streaks can count for multiple eight streaks. And also we were gonna wrap around streaks. So if you end a game with say four shots in a row and then you make four shots in a row the following game, the first, the first quarter, that means that you had an eight shot streak wrapping around the game. Um, so with 30,697 shots, that means that minus seven, he had 30,690 chances to have an eight shot streak in his career. 
So if we take the probability of an eight shot streak, 0.159%, and find that times 30,690, that is uh, 0.159 of 30,690, we get the expected number of eight shot streaks he would have by chance alone if these were independent. And we get 48, almost 49. Now, the actual number of eight shot streaks in his career that Kobe had, 47. Very, very close. So the assumption of independence, the assumption that he is not having a hot hand at any time, every single shot has exactly a 47.7% chance of going in, means that we predict he has about 48 eight shot streaks in his career. He actually had 47. The assumption of independence fared pretty well here. So that brings us to our discussion question for today. Is the evidence I just presented to you, which shows good evidence for independence, is this enough evidence to disprove the hot hand theory? If yes, explain how. If not, how else would you test the theory? That's it for today's statisticians. Goodbye for now. <laughs>